Hello everyone and welcome to another session of AP Human Geography Review with Mr. Elrod. Uh, today we're going to be talking about a few concepts that we tend to find pretty early in the in the course. Environmental determinism, possibilism, and cultural determinism. So we'll be talking about uh, the basic ideas behind all three concepts. We'll talk about, uh, you know, kind of what are the implications of each and then we'll do some review, some review questions at the end. Uh, so first of all, if we look at exactly what are we doing with these particular uh, concepts or ideas, uh, things like uh, co environmental determinism, possibilism, and cultural determinism are, are ways that we have tried to develop theories uh, to explain and understand why certain groups of people have developed, and this can be either uh, culturally, it can be economically, it can be politically, whatever, however we like to categorize it, and why some haven't. Uh, it really started back towards kind of the Enlightenment period, uh, the age of exploration, 14 to 1700 or so, when the Europeans start uh, running into other groups of people that they had either never met before or begin uh, you know, seeing new cultures that they had never seen before, whether it was in Africa or whether it was in the Americas or in the East Indies. Uh, and they begin asking themselves the questions, you know, why are these groups of people, uh, why do they behave this way, why have they not developed the same economies or same political systems, things like that, and, and we have. And so they start asking themselves these questions, uh, which eventually leads us to, uh, to some of the different theories. Uh, but anyway, so that's really where it begins, uh, and so it's, it's an effort to answer those particular questions, because as you know, we as humans, we can't stand not having uh, answers to the questions uh, of the world, and so we, you know, we develop theories and ideas as to why things are the way that they are. Uh, when we look at these theories, uh, or these concepts or ideas, what we're looking at really is the uh, interaction between a couple of different things. You have the interactions between the culture of a people, the environment that they find themselves in, and their development. Again, this can be social development, political development, economic development, and a lot of times these things kind of go hand in hand. Not always, but you know, a lot of times they go hand in hand. So we could look at development in several different ways, not necessarily from an HDI perspective, but just from the progression that we tend to see society go through. Uh, so if we look at uh, just theories not kind of in order, uh, really the oldest one is this environmental determinist uh, theory and again it kind of goes uh, with the enlightenment period and even up uh, maybe up to some uh, has some elements of, of evolution and Charles Darwin and things like that in it uh, and the reason uh, the reason for that is at least to help us understand it a little bit better is we we understand it as this concept where the environment is going to cause or force certain forms of development on groups of people uh, and really the Europeans try to use this particular thought process to, to understand and explain their particular dominance over other groups of people uh, and, and to explain their, their what they saw as or perceived as superiority over other groups of people and why they had advanced technologically, uh, intellectually, philosophically, uh, all those types of things. So they really tried to develop those kinds of ideas. And you see elements of the Enlightenment in there also. If you look at uh, some of the writings of, of people like uh, John Locke, he talks about perfect environments for setting up governments. In fact, he believed that uh, the environment of South Carolina would have been the, the perfect environment to establish a government. Obviously, he didn't spend a whole lot of time in South Carolina because it's incredibly hot and humid, especially where he was, uh, and not exactly the place that I would want to spend a tremendous amount of my time. Um, but anyway, so that, that's just kind of the concept or idea. So we notice there that it's very deterministic. Now, for the most part, uh, this, this whole concept of environmental determinism has been um, thrown out as, as a good theory of explanation. Jared Diamond, who wrote Guns, Germs, and Steel, uh, might disagree with you in some, in some elements, but of course there are those who disagree with him. Anyway, so that is environmental determinism. As we move, kind of historically, possibilism really is, is the next one, and this is more of a positive positive view on humanity and their ability to develop and things like this. And so essentially what positive possibilism says is that yes, the, we, we acknowledge that the environment places some restraints on human development. Uh, you know, some environmental conditions are going to be make it harder for people to uh, develop uh, socially, economically, politically, uh, philosophically, intellectually, whatever. Um, but we also notice that, that humans are very resilient and, and they can overcome some of their environmental restraints. And so no matter how difficult it is, we see that people are very inventive, they're very uh, resilient to their environment, and so they create, uh, they create these things in their world that help them to, uh, to live in their environment in the best way possible. Now, one, thing, one of the elements of possibilism is that there is almost this limit uh, that humans can go so far, but you know they may not be able to overcome all 
of the uh, environmental restraints that are there. And of course this is going to be kind of before the age of some of our new technologies and economies and money that's floating around that really helps some of these countries. You know, you think about the Caribbean nations, you think about some of the Middle Eastern nations, um, and, and the way that they've been able to use uh, technology or the consumption of petroleum or other products uh, to overcome some of their environmental barriers. So anyhow, that's possibilism. And then you have cultural determinism. This is like the epitome of positive thinking. Uh, it's this idea that the only thing that's going to restrain people in terms of their development are themselves. So people, there are really no natural barriers to, mo to a society's progression or development or improvement or any of those types of things except for the restraints that they place on themselves. Uh, and so, you know, no negative thinking about who you are as a person or what you can achieve. You know, it reminds me of some sort of, um, uh, you know, I don't, what do you call those people? It reminds me of some sort of uh, speaker who's trying to uh, to get you all riled up and get you uh, get you excited about who you are. So anyway, that's kind of what it sounds like and that's kind of what it is. Um, so we look at the culture, we look at the people, and, and we see, you know, what is it about the culture that's maybe restraining uh, the folks in their development that's not allowing these things to uh, to occur. So this could be religious restraints or maybe some uh, traditional cultural restraints in terms of what people are and aren't allowed to do. Uh, maybe certain elements of certain economic activities that they're not allowed to participate participate in, uh, which would which would keep them from developing uh, things along those lines. So those are the three basic differences between the three. And again, those are kind of progressive through time. And you definitely see impacts on impacts of of modern philosophical movements and modern intellectual movements on uh, those particular thought processes. Now there are other theories out there. There's humans as modifiers. Um, uh, just as an example uh, of another one, um, but we're not going to go over those. These are just the three I know that I'm pretty sure presented in the Rubenstein text, and they're those three basic ones that we need to be aware of. So now what we're going to do is we're going to look at some review questions. I'm going to make some statements, and you decide whether or not whether they would be from an environmental determinist perspective, from a cultural determinist perspective, or a possibilist perspective. And again, you know the drill. Look at the question, pause it for just a second, uh, see if you can answer it, and then I'll. I'll reveal the answer. So the first one says, it's a statement that says, if we can look to terrace farming uh, as an example of humans' ability to overcome harsh environmental conditions and ignore the grammatical errors in that particular statement. Okay, looking to terrace farming as an example of a humans of humans' ability to overcome harsh environmental conditions. Of course, terrace farming used in very uh, steep terrain, but allows people to still farm used in, um, in the Andes Mountains with the Inca Empire, used in Southeast Asia even still today. Uh, so definitely an, an example of human ingenuity. So that is going to be from a possibilist perspective. And you might be able to argue a couple of different perspectives, but I, I show this as possibilist because of this idea that, yes, there are harsh environmental conditions, the steep mountain size, the steep terrain uh, create barriers. However, uh, the people have been able to overcome those. But again, even if you look at things like the Inca Empire, they were only, to, they were only able to go so far uh, in terms of their development before they were conquered by the Spanish. Now you might want to argue with me that you know, had the Spanish not invaded and conquered, maybe they had been able to develop the same technology and so forth and so on. Maybe so, uh, but still I'm going with a possible perspective on that particular statement. Statement two, we can look at the laws that restrict a woman's integration into society as a reason why some cultures and society ha societies have not been able to develop as far as others. Okay, and so there are some societies in our world today that restrict uh, females' integration in society, Western culture, uh, not too long ago, the 1920s, before women were given the right to vote in the United States. So this would be uh, an element that might hinder, or some would argue would hinder, the development of a country. The answer to that is going to be cultural determinism. Again, you see the culture is what's keeping uh, society back because it won't, for whatever reason, uh, they won't allow uh, female integration to decide whether it's economically, politically, culturally, whatever else it happens to be. Statement number three, we can look to the uh, difference in levels of development between North, and North Korea and South Korea as an example. Obviously, South Korea has developed uh, much, uh, much further and faster than North Korea. Uh, obviously, with, with the communist regime or the totalitarian regime in North Korea, the more free market uh, capitalism taking place in South Korea. And so that's going to be cultural determinism. Again, you know, looking at the cultural elements... And maybe you want to say cultural elements, because obviously the Koreas are the same culture, but uh, the elements uh, that have been imposed on them by their particular uh, society. And again, it's more of a government structure there at that point, so I'm using that as the part of culture. 
uh, one uh, one political structure allows more freedom, more openness uh, in society, and the other does not. And so that has allowed for the South Koreans uh, to develop much further. So some might point to that as a prime example, saying that you have the exact same group of people with the exact same history and traditions. However, one has been able to progress further economically, politically, socially, all those things uh, than the other. Statement 4 says the temperate climates of Europe allowed the Europeans to develop more sophisticated societies, cultures, and economies. So here, the, again, the emphasis on is on the actual climate of Europe itself. And the answer to that is going to be environmental determinism. And again, this is actually an argument that was made, that has been made historically. It was made by enlightened, enlightenment philosophers and, and political thinkers and theorists and things for, you know, for several hundred years as an answer to the question, well, why have the Europeans developed further and faster than, than other societies? Uh, you know, today we've come up with different theories and ideas, but again, that's one that's historically rooted, uh, and that is environmental determinism. Number five, Caribbean nations who have moved towards service-oriented economies would be an example of a group overcoming some of their difficult environmental barriers. The answer to that is going to be possibilism. And again, we, we look at a lot of uh, Caribbean nations, and you look either the tourist industry or the banking industry or whatever, uh, they've been able to overcome uh, the, the environment that maybe wouldn't allow them to develop large industries or uh, resource extraction or any of those types of things are smaller countries so they're not able to necessarily compete on a larger scale and maybe whether it's uh, aquaculture and fishing or agriculture and those types of things so uh, this example would be uh, possibleism because they've been able to overcome because of their move into a different segment of the economy and lastly six some countries in the world will remain poor and undeveloped because of the harsh climatic and environmental conditions that exist in their country And that's going to be, again, environmental determinism. And again, the statement is showing that uh, it is the harsh environmental conditions that are forcing uh, these countries into poverty. Now, again, there, uh, you know, not a whole lot of people agree with those kinds of statements anymore. Uh, and they look to other things like dependency theory and the, the economic structure of the world, whatever. Uh, but again, if we were to look at that statement based upon the statement that was made, that would be from an environmental determinist perspective. So anyway, uh, those are those three, three theories and some review questions on those. I hope you found them to be helpful. Uh, again, like uh, like the video, subscribe to my channel. Feel free to leave me comments uh, as far as what you would find helpful. And good luck studying for...